Profiles in Cinemania, Shelley Duvall. Since the birth of the film industry, thousands have dreamed of being discovered. Many suffering cinemania have dreamt of some famous director or producer clapping a hand on their shoulder, telling them, kid, you're unnatural, and whisking them off to a life of wealth, fame, and cool parties with hot people. In reality, the chance of something like that happening to anyone are so minuscule that winning the lottery is a comparative shoo-in. Nevertheless, there are a tiny number who beat the odds, who manage to combine luck with natural talents, who have the optimism and work ethic to fuel a climb to stardom. One of these wildly lucky individuals is Shelley Duvall. Born in Fort Worth, Texas on June 7, 1949, Shelley Duvall originally had no experience with, or really even any interest in, acting. Her career in showbiz had its unexpected beginning in 1970, when she crashed a party near Fort Worth, thrown by some guy named Robert Altman. It just so happened that Altman was a film director, and not just any film director. He was a new Hollywood auteur, renowned for his ensemble pieces that explored places, times, and events. He just completed MASH, a black comedy set in the Korean War that was really an indictment of the Vietnam War. And as luck would have it, he was in the process of shooting Brewster McLeod, another black comedy, not far away. Duvall had a captivating, willowy appearance and a natural buoyance that dominated a room. Altman was charmed, and by the party's end, he offered to put her in the picture. It was the offer of a lifetime. Who in their right mind would say no to that? Well, Shelley Duvall would, that too. She turned down Altman's offer. He had to spend the next few days wheedling until, in her words, I got tired of arguing and thought, maybe I am an actress. Reluctantly, she decided to give it a whirl. And what a whirl she gave. Shelley Duvall proved to be a natural at both scripted and improvised acting. She spent most of the next decade working on Robert Altman films to significant critical acclaim. Her breakthrough role came on Altman's 1975 film, Nashville, which earned her a spot on Saturday Night Live. And by 1978, her work on Altman's Three Women won her the Cannes Film Festival's coveted Palme d'Or and garnered her a BAFTA nomination. Later that year, she played against Woody Allen in his landmark film, Annie Hall. And shortly thereafter, the legendary Stanley Kubrick was at her door, looking to attach her as the female lead for his new picture, an adaptation of the Stephen King novel, The Shining. Kubrick's one of those directors who doesn't ask, he tells. For someone whose acclaim came from playing characters possessed of an effervescent optimism, it's ironic that Shelley Duvall's most recognized role was as the teary, emotionally fragile Wendy Torrance. Her performance as a subject of domestic violence was so chilling and believable that psychology students continue to write analyses of it to this day. It was indeed a performance for the ages, but one that came at great cost. Stanley Kubrick pushed Duvall to her limits, reportedly subjecting her to extreme psychological torture and humiliation all throughout the production of The Shining, supposedly in an effort to make her instability appear more genuine. One incident of abuse set a Guinness record, and one which has yet to be surpassed in cinema. Kubrick forced Duvall to go a grueling 127 takes in the scene where she wields a baseball bat at Jack Nicholson as she backs away up a set of stairs. For Kubrick, it was Tuesday. Though The Shining may have left emotional scars on everyone who worked on it, or even really watched it, Shelley Duvall was never one to surrender to despair. She returned to work with Robert Altman on 1980's Popeye as the female lead. Despite having been mocked as olive oil as a child, she was also perhaps the only living actress who could credibly play that beloved character. Popeye was a hit with kids, and though it managed to turn a profit, it was declared a failure by the critics. This meant the new Hollywood elite Robert Altman had helped to create would now no longer touch him. But Shelley Duvall lucked out again, dodging the figurative bullet that hit her long-term creative partner. The 1980s saw Duvall's star continue to rise. She had a role in Terry Gilliam's Time Bandits and appeared in an episode of The New Twilight Zone, starred in Tim Burton's Disney short Frankenweenie, and co-starred with superstar comedian Steve Martin in 1987's Roxanne, among many others. More notably, however, Duvall followed in the footsteps of Lucille Ball by stepping into a role as an executive producer. A lifelong passion for fairy tales led her to found her own production company, from which she launched Fairy Tale Theater. 
Fairy Tale Theater was one of the first premium cable original programming series, one which retold classic children's fairy tales using creations of the Jim Henson Studios cast against top movie stars of the era. Let me tell you a story. It's magical. Christopher Walken, Robin Williams, Eric Idle, and many others appeared in Fairy Tale Theater. Many of its episodes were directed by high powered names such as Francis Ford Coppola and Tim Burton. It ended up being a smash hit that endeared itself to critics, audiences, and investors alike, won a Peabody and a TCA, and most importantly of all, proved that premium cable originals were indeed profitable. We've all used the success of Fairy Tale Theater to start another company and produce three other similarly themed series aimed at slightly different demographics. Tall Tales and Stories, Nightmare Classic, and Shelley Duvall's Bedtime Stories. These shows carried her through the rest of the decade and won her the hearts of 80s kids, if not the pair of Emmy nominations she received. Duvall's luck saved her once again in 1994 when the North Ridge earthquake struck. It killed 60 people, destroyed buildings and freeways, but only damaged her home in Benedict Canyon. While repairs were underway, she went to Texas to work on The Underneath with Steven Soderbergh, in many ways Robert Altman's successor. Seeing as she had retired from producing the year before, she decided to stay in the Lone Star State for good. Over the course of the 1990s, she took a few other notable roles, including playing opposite John Malkovich in Jane Campion's The Portrait of a Lady, and against Hulk Hogan in Suburban Commando. After an insane baseball bat-wielding Jack Nicholson, the Hulkster was a teddy bear. Shelley Duvall has many natural talents, but perhaps the most important was knowing when to hold them and knowing when to fold them. In 2002, that's just what she did. She retired. Not many have it in them to overcome a case of Cinemania, but as we've established, Shelley Duvall has always been one lucky duck. In the grueling atmosphere of New Hollywood, she survived the pitfalls of fame, the jaws of the Hollywood machine, and Stanley Kubrick. This slender wave turned out to have a backbone of stainless steel. She is currently living happily ever after in Blanco, Texas, which is about the best ending to a fairy tale you're going to get in this crazy mixed up world. This has been another profile in Cinemania. This episode was written by Ethan Ireland and performed by Andrea Palladino. Mixing, mastering, and sound design by Ethan Ireland. Music by Carl Casey at White Bat Audio. Profiles in Cinemania is a product of the Cinemania Society, LLC.